you a little bit about the salmon cob salad. So this recipe, I like to call a powerhouse salad that is healthy and also versatile. So we're using canned salmon today and hard cooked eggs, and that makes it protein rich. And it also makes it a meatless uh, meal option. So reducing our meat intake um, to less than 500 grams a day, 18 ounces, uh, 500 grams per week or 18 ounces per week, lowers our risk of several cancers, according to World Cancer Authority. So 500 grams, what would that be? Well, um, the palm of our hand or the size of a deck of cards is about 100 grams. So that would mean no more than five of those portions per week. So using salmon, using the eggs is, is a good option. It's also a great recipe for swapping out fiber rich veggies for low fiber veggies or vice versa. Um, so you can actually make it your own, like Jeremy likes to say. And even if we're using low fiber veggies, uh, know that you're still getting some of the health benefits from the uh, health promoting compounds that are found in plant foods. Uh, even if you're not getting a lot of fiber, you're still getting some of what we call phytonutrients, which are the nutrients you find in plants. Okay, off to you, Jeremy. There you go. Um, uh, off to this Cobb salad. This is, it is one of my favorite salads. I think Daniela described it perfectly um, as like a powerhouse salad. Um, I, I love it and I relate to it even as sort of a, a leftover or clean out your fridge sort of salad because it really is just a combination of odds and ends, different textures, different flavors um, to make this really sort of, you know, satiating salad. It's definitely, you know, not your typical leafy or lighter salad. Um, so I love it for that fact. And you can really make an assembly salad. So again, use what you have in the kitchen for, for proteins, you know, it might be maybe some leftover chicken uh, or some tofu, or to keep it simple, I love leaning on, you know, canned fish. Um, and it doesn't just have to be tuna. I know we're all very familiar with canned tuna. Um, you can get the canned salmon as well. You can get mackerel. Canned mackerel would be really great if you're, you know, if you like that. Um, but we're going to do it with the canned salmon today just to make it really, really, really simple and easy. Um, if you've never used it before, canned salmon before, make sure that you do look for the boneless skinless version and it will be labeled boneless skinless. Um, other, unless you're okay with bone skin, but I, I feel like that's something you probably, uh, you know, don't want to you know, fuss around with. So look for the boneless and skinless version. Um, but otherwise you can, you know, get sockeye, there's sockeye salmon, you get you know, different types, different variations, coho, of course. Um, and then for your other ingredients, again, use what you like, use what works for you as well. So what we're doing is we're going to choose a few different ones. We're going to start off with some cucumber. Uh, Daniela, I guess if, again, you have fiber concerns or restrictions, skins and seeds. They're out. Yeah. Skins and seeds yeah. are out. Um, cucumber is a good choice because it's actually a lower fiber vegetable. Um, and then it, it's even better when you remove the, the skins and seeds. Yeah. So what, all you have to do with the cucumber, peel it, you know, the outside, and then you can cut it in half and then just use a spoon, run it through the, the cavity, the middle there, to easily remove all those seeds. Um, and then this is, you know, a great obviously ingredient for a cop salad, really nice and crunchy. Do you know the history of the cob salad, Daniela? Do I know the history? Yes. No. No, I do not. I'm thinking it's an English. Is it English? It's actually, it's great guess. It's American. It's American. Uh, oh. It is. It was invented. The exact date, I think there's a little bit of uh, back and forth, but uh, in about the 30s, um, it was invented at the Hollywood Brown Derby restaurant <laughs> in Hollywood. Yeah, and I don't believe it exists anymore, but it was, uh, I guess, a hot spot for all the, the, the 30s, 20s, 40s, you know, actors. 
Uh, and it was then, yeah, I guess by one of the, the cooks uh, at that restaurant. And I think that's one of your favorite eras, isn't it? The 30s. I, I do romanticize about, yes, the <laughs> 20s and 30s. And, yeah. Uh, okay, so cucumber, very simple. Q, uh, peeled and poured. Um, another really easy one, again, talking about assembly cooking, you can roast your peppers from scratch, <coughs> excuse me, to remove the skins and the seeds. A little dry throat, okay. Um, or they come already roasted, uh, pre-roasted. These are great to sort of keep on hand. You can keep them in the fridge. You can add them to salads, add them to soups. You can make really nice, like, rom like a, a romesco sauce or something with them. So these are great little pantry items. And all that work's already done for me, which is nice. Skins and seeds removed. If you do see a couple seeds, sometimes there's maybe a couple seeds left, just make sure to remove those. And red, red peppers are also a good choice if you need lower fiber. Um, and, and great idea with the roasted because it's so flavorful, but they also have the, the uh, skins removed, which, which uh, makes it helpful. Yeah, I love that. And, and then you can't forget, you know, the beautiful red color um, and their red peppers are really, they're pretty high in vitamin C. They get 169% of our daily value. Amazing. Awesome. And again, you can use whatever veg you want. Um, we're going for, I'm going to use a little bit of avocado, but this would be, I guess, Danielle, a little different in terms of fiber, yeah. Yeah, that would be on the higher fiber side. So if you need to follow low fiber, you may want to omit the avocado or just use a small amount. Or does this potato fit with, with the cob salad? Or am I thinking of something else? No, no way. Okay. No, I mean, traditionally, maybe not. But um, again, this is, uh, this I would treat it as sort of a, you know, whatever you have on hand, sort of salad. So yeah, some cooked potato would be really good in this for sure. How about, how about green or yellow beans? Would that be Absolutely. cool? Okay, Absolutely, yeah. so that'll be lower fiber. Yeah. Sure, for sure. Uh, again, again, you know, sort of use what works for you, um, adjust as you need to. Um, just a little quick, I'll do a quick little demo on the avocado. Uh, I know we've done this many times, but I will continue to do it as it seems to be the um, number one cause of home-related kitchen or home kitchen-related injuries. Uh, so people uh, going to emergency, uh, the number one reason why regarding uh, you know, kitchen-related accidents is avocado cutting. So um, we will show you how to do this safely to avoid any sort of injury uh the first thing remove the little pit on the top that will cause an issue if you're trying to cut through it with your knife it could divert it on the, the side and you can you know get it towards your hand which is what you want to avoid so remove that little pit on the top um, and then instead of holding your hand you get some people that are really comfortable you know doing i've been doing it a long time sometimes i do it you know you're really comfortable just putting it in your hand but if you're easily distracted and you're sort of anytime you're pushing the knife towards your hand that is a no-no that can get very dangerous so uh, we're going to put the avocado on the board okay and we're going to take our knife hand out of the way fingers you can put on either side of the knife just to hold it in place but again it's out of the way of the blade and just gently push down just until you hit the pit okay and then roll Again, keeping the avocado on the board, I'm just using the shape of the avocado to roll around until you get to the other side, and then you can twist, and you have your avocado split open. Okay, that's part one. Next part, this is where I think a lot of people sort of make a little mistake, is again, holding it in your hand, you wanna get that pit out, and you're sort of aiming this little battle axe towards that pit. Um, you know, you're distracted, someone's talking to you. 
and that's where you can get a little dangerous again. So keep it on the board. And even if it takes a couple tries, with your hands out of the way, you're not going to get hurt this way. So we're going to aim, life in the pit, and then we can twist and remove. Okay? So now we have our avocado free. Yay. Pit is now in our knife. Number three, another way you can accidentally hurt yourself. You may be tempted just to pull the pit right off of the knife. That pit is very slippery, number one. Number two, it can sometimes get jammed in your knife. And so again, you're, you're applying a lot of pressure to pull it out. You can easily slice yourself that way. So if it, you find that it is jammed in there and it's really stuck, don't force it. Just, again, knife down to the cutting board, pit on the cutting board, hand on top, out of the way, and just give it a gentle push, and you're gonna cut right through the pit. So remove it easily and safely. No injuries here. Okay. There's a little avocado cutting 101. At this point, we can take the spoon and just scoop out. And then what about ripeness? How do you know yeah. if it's perfectly ripe? So if you're looking for when it's ripe, uh, again, give it a gentle squeeze. You know, <clears throat> if it's still very firm, then it probably still has a day or two. Um, you can just you know keep it out. So put it in the fridge. Or the fridge will just slow down the ripening. So you can just keep it on the counter. Um, once it has some nice skim to it, you're good to go. To tell that it is maybe a little overripe, uh, that little pit on the top, if you remove that pit, you can get an indication of the color underneath. If it's already, you know, dark, very dark, like black almost on the inside, it's probably getting a little too ripe. Uh, I don't suggest you do this with every avocado in the grocery store, or maybe you can do a few, if no one's looking. <laughs> Um, but that's a way to tell, you know, maybe avoid that avocado. But otherwise, yeah, just feel for it. Right. Okay. And so, yes. Oh, I was just going to say, while we're assembling the salad, um, looking at the three vegetables we're using, or I said vegetables, roasted red peppers, cucumbers, and avocado, there's this debate, like, are they really vegetables? Because they have seeds on the inside. So. I'm curious to know what our viewers think. Um, are roasted red peppers, cucumbers, and avocados fruits or vegetables? Let us know. What do you think, Jeremy? If you're watching live, you can enter your guess in the chat. Are they vegetables or not? If, uh, this, if you're watching this recorded version, you can answer in the chat. Or not in the chat. In the... Comments. What's it called? Not chat. Comment. Uh, me, uh, I am going to guess. Um, <laughs> I feel like I should know this. I'm going to guess that the avocado is a fruit because of the pit. Yeah. And and the peppers and the cucumbers are vegetables. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's a debate, right? It, it's how you want to view it. Uh, but yeah, that's what comes up. But it also comes up that cucumbers are actually a fruit and, and the red peppers. But uh, from my perspective and the way I like to eat it, I'm going to say they're vegetables. Yeah. We have a guess from Jeff. Yeah, peppers, veg, avocado, fruit. There we go. Thank you, Jeff. All right. So. This is where, so we have our avocado, we have our roasted pepper, cucumber, again, assembling, you know, whatever you want. Usually the base would be lettuce. I'm doing this without the lettuce. Um, and then we can add our proteins. Um, so we're gonna be adding some canned salmon. I also love the idea, and you would traditionally see this in a cob salad, it is a hard boiled egg. So we're gonna add that in there. Again, really packing the protein in this dish. Get some of that, and I guess the traditional look of this dish is sort of lining it up in a bowl and sort of arranging your ingredients in a row like this. You don't have to do this at home. <laughs> I would probably not do this at home if I was 
just try to put it all together. You can throw it in a bowl, but you want that cob, the signature cob style and look. Light it up. And you're using the salmon, you're getting some great omega-3 fatty acid. And if you wanted to boost your omega-3 fatty acid even more, you can use the omega-3 fatty acid eggs. And so you can get some great uh, uh, anti-inflammatory nutrients going on there. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I, I could even have like tofu, like I had some firm tofu in the fridge left over, like this would be a nice little option to add to our dish. Um, so again, play around with the proteins. Um, and there we go, that's our salad, ready to go. It's looking nice and pretty. You got some cheese, I guess, on top. Uh, and now for the dressing, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. This is just a, a little Dijon vinaigrette. So, and you can add, if you don't have Dijon mustard, or if you don't like Dijon mustard, you can even add yellow mustard. Like I've made this before, you yellow mustard. What's nice is the mustard, so about, I'm gonna go with a, a good teaspoon. The mustard actually helps to emulsify your uh, dressing. So it's gonna make it really, really nice and creamy. There. And we're gonna go for a couple tablespoons of olive oil and about a tablespoon and a half of vinegar. This is just white wine vinegar. You can use any vinegar. Use lemon juice if you like. Seasoning or salt and pepper. And I'm doing this in a jar, a little mason jar. I always love doing my dressings in here. It just makes it super easy to shake and mix together. And if I make if I can get the lid on, there we go. Uh, and then if I have any leftover, I can put it in the fridge, which is really nice. Give it a shake. And again, like I said, that mustard is gonna help to emulsify your ingredients, so you're gonna get the vinegar and the olive oil together, make it really, really nice and creamy. But it's essentially three ingredients, so pretty simple dressing. It looks like it looks like this really nice and creamy dressing. Nice. That's it. Put it on top. Obviously, dress it. With whatever your favorite dressing is. See, I have a little bit extra, so that can go in the fridge for the next one. But there you have one of my favorite salads. This is the cob salad, uh, but the salmon cob salad. Beautiful. And there we go. Nice little powerhouse salad, like Daniela said.